the Airbus A350 versus A380. Why are we comparing the two? A380 was launched in 2000 and was Airbus's hope to break into the 747 market and dominate the hub and spoke model. Large aircraft carrying passengers between mega cities before smaller ones bring them to their final destination. Boeing, however, claimed passengers rather fly direct to smaller cities on smaller twin engine efficient white bodies with the same range. Their 787 sold well and airlines pressured Airbus into a new composite airliner to compete. Given the stretched resources, Airbus eventually decided to develop the carbon composite A350, while A380 was still in early phases of production. To reduce cost, many A380 technologies were brought into the A350. Examples include electronic bleed air system and the high-pressure hydraulics. Given the fall of the hub-and-spoke model, the A380 is out of production. Airbus's largest offering is the A350-1000. But just how much do they differ in capacity and range? Before we find out, please hit subscribe if you would like to see more of such epic videos. Performance a350-1000 typically carries around 350 passengers in a 3-class layout and flies up to 8,700 nautical miles in its latest 319-ton takeoff weight variant. The A380-800 carries around 575 passengers in a 3-class cabin enablers layout and flies 8,000 nautical miles. Engines. The A380 uses four previous generation Rolls Royce Trent 900 or Engine Alliance GP7200 engines, each producing 78,000 pounds of thrust. The A350 1000 uses the newest Rolls Royce Trent XWB97 engines, each producing 97,000 pounds of thrust. Efficiency. Here is where the newest twin-engine, technologically advanced A350 wins out. Over a typical 6,000 nautical mile long-haul mission in 3-class layout, the A350-1000 burns an incredible 45% less fuel per trip. The additional seats on the A380-800 does reduce the difference per seat, but A350-1000 still burns 18% less per seat at 2.58 litres per passenger compared to 3.16 litres per passenger for every 100 kilometres flow. Cabins A350-1000 features the newest airspace cabin with higher ceilings, larger windows with now the optional electronic dimmable windows. It has a unique flat floor solution for the IFE system and more advanced in-flight entertainment systems than the A380. It has lower cabin altitude with higher cabin pressure of 6,000 feet, more moist air and a quieter cabin. With the new production standard, it's 4 inches wider, allowing for wider 18.7 inch wide economy seats in a 9 abreast layout. However, Airbus is more actively promoting 10 abreast on the A350 with 17 inch seats to add around 30 more seats. A380 has all the same features, but adds to that simply unrivaled space. In 10 abreast, economy seats can go up to 19 inches. And even at 11 abreast, it's 18 inches. It's even quieter than the A350, smoother, and its extra space opens new possibilities in the premium cabins. These include shower spas and more. It's hard to deny the A380 has the best cabin in the sky. Advantages and Disadvantages 
If airlines need capacity into slot-constrained airports, the A380 is still the largest and best solution. It's the most comfortable for premium long-haul dense routes. However, its aging heavy fuselage, wings, and previous generation engines makes it inefficient today, and the sheer size makes it a less flexible aircraft since it's harder to fail on most routes. A350-1000 is way more efficient with its new engines, composite wings, and fuselage. Its smaller size allows airlines to deploy it on more routes without sacrificing range, meaning it's more flexible. Airbus also constantly upgraded it. With the new production standard, airlines can now opt for 10 abreast 17-inch wide seats to boost capacity to 400 passengers on dense routes. It also has 30-inch longer cabin thanks to the repositioning of the rear pressure bulkhead, allowing an additional row of seats. However, this additional capacity comes at the cost of comfort, and the A350-1000 isn't large enough to replace A380s on premium dense routes. Orders. A380 over its entire program received 251 orders. A350-1000 may have gotten to a slow start, but as replacement wave for larger 777s come, its orders is slowly picking up since its updated launch in 2011. It received 226 orders and counting. Really, both aren't selling as well as smaller A350-900, which capacity of 300 seats is optimal for most airlines and has the same range to fly the same missions. So overall, while smaller than the A380, the A350-1000 is more flexible and is a worthy successor to the A380, flying more point-to-point -point on lower capacity routes. Should airlines need more seats, the 777-9 is the better aircraft for them. But that's a comparison for another video. If you would like to see that, please hit subscribe and stay tuned for more videos on the way. Until we meet next time, one team, one aviation, one sky ahead.